Hi there, I'm meteorologist David Jones, and in the next few minutes, I'm going to explain the effects of El Nino and something called the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, or the PDO, on winter weather patterns in BC. More specifically, I'm going to look at temperature, precipitation, and snowfall. There's been a shift towards El Nino conditions this year. If you look at average sea surface temperatures over the equatorial Pacific since about October of 2005, you'll notice a change from cooler than normal water to warmer than normal water. That change took place in about April this year. Here's what El Nino does to the atmosphere. Under normal or neutral conditions, east winds push warm water along the equator. The warm water pools and injects heat and moisture into the atmosphere. When El Nino occurs, winds across the equatorial Pacific shift to the west. The warm pool of water spreads out, and heat and moisture are now added further east. The changed position of a very important source of heat and moisture upsets global weather patterns. This animation shows sea surface temperature anomalies, that is the difference from normal temperatures over the Pacific in the past year. If you watch the colors along the equator, you'll notice a gradual shift from cooler shades of light blue to warmer shades of yellows and orange at the end of the animation. Climate models forecast a continuation of this trend and predict a moderate El Nino by winter. Moderate or strong El Ninos affect temperature and precipitation in BC. El Nino splits the jet stream over the Pacific Ocean, directing one branch northward around the Aleutian Low, and a southern branch towards California, which becomes unusually stormy. The Aleutian Low helps direct the northern branch of the jet stream, which is really just the main pathway of storms onto the coast. Here's what we know about winter temperatures during El Nino. To be clear, winter is December through February. Virtually all of Canada, except the far north, is typically warmer than normal, as shown by the yellow, orange, and red colors. In BC, it's the same. Winter is warmer than normal everywhere, by about one degree on the coast and in the north, and by about two and a half degrees in the interior. The relationship between El Nino and precipitation is not as strong. In the BC interior, El Ninos bring drier than normal winters. On the coast, however, the pattern is more complicated. The position and strength of the Aleutian Low, which influences the path of the jet stream, seems to determine whether the coast is drier or wetter than normal. It turns out there's another lesser-known oscillation, as climatologists refer to them, that seems to have a major impact on winter weather in BC. It's called the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, or the PDO, and it's essentially a warming or cooling of the waters of the Pacific Ocean that lasts about 20 to 30 years. During a warm or positive phase, the West Pacific becomes cool, and part of the Eastern Ocean warms. Here's roughly what it looks like. During the warm phase, the Pacific Ocean off the coast of BC becomes warmer than normal. During the cold phase, the Pacific becomes cooler than normal. The PDO is measured by an index. The index is positive or red during the warm phase and negative or blue during the cold phase. This graph charts the PDO from about 1900 to 2005. For most of the early part of the century, the PDO was in warm phase. Around 1946, it shifted to cold phase until about 1976 when it shifted back to warm phase. These are significant dates, as we'll see. In about 1998, it appeared the index was becoming cold again, but it didn't last. Remember that during the winter of 1998-99, Mount Baker in Washington State set the so-called world record for single-season snowfall. Let's take a look at snowfall at Fernie, B.C., which has an elevation of about 1,100 meters. Fernie is located in the southeast corner of the province in the Elk Valley. The Rocky Mountains provide a dramatic backdrop at Fernie, and it's well known as a mecca for powder skiing. Environment Canada's climate records there date back to 1913. This graph charts El Nino and snowfall at Fernie. The departure or difference from normal snowfall is on the vertical axis in centimeters. The black line in the middle represents zero departure from normal. Or normal snowfall. The graph covers the period from 1913 to 2003. El Nino years are identified in red, neutral years in yellow, and La Nina years in blue. Recall the important dates of 1946 and 1976. 
If you look closely at the graph prior to 1946, you'll notice that all of the El Nino years show below normal snowfall. From 1946 to 1976, there are fewer El Ninos, and all the La Nina years show above normal snowfall. After 1976, El Ninos dominate again, and snowfalls were below normal for each and every El Nino year. Two relationships are apparent from this graph. One, El Ninos are more frequent during the warm phase of the PDO and two, snowfall at Fernie is consistently below normal when El Nino occurs during the warm phase of the PDO. To the northwest of Fernie lies Golden at about 785 meters. Golden is another valley station and Environment Canada records date back to 1902. El Nino and PDO effects on snowfall at Golden mirror the Fernie graph. At Golden, during warm phase PDO, more frequent El Ninos are correlated with reduced snowfall. During the cold phase PDO, more frequent La Ninas are correlated with greater than normal snowfall. Moving to the coast and to a much higher elevation station reveals something about the character of high alpine snowfalls during El Nino. Snowfall records for the Whistler Mountain Roundhouse at an elevation of about 1,900 meters date back to 1973, just prior to the reversal of the PDO from cold to warm phase. Whistler effects are of particular interest because of the upcoming 2010 Olympics. In the warm phase PDO period from 1976 until today, annual snowfalls during El Nino, La Nina, and neutral years show no discernible pattern at the Roundhouse. In fact, during the last El Nino, IntraWest Resorts promoted the idea that El Nino causes more snow at Whistler. They may be right, but they didn't specify at what elevation. The Cypress Bowl Climate Station may provide some clues about the impact of El Nino on the snowpack at lower elevations in the coast range. Cypress Bowl, a ski resort within a half hour of downtown Vancouver, is also a venue for the 2010 Olympics. The climate station at Cypress Bowl is located at about 850 meters elevation. During the brief period of record at Cypress Bowl, El Nino snowfalls are consistently below normal. This result is what you'd expect since El Nino winters are warmer than normal and since total precipitation seems to depend strongly on the position and strength of the Aleutian Low. Finally, a quick look at the snow fraction at Cypress Bowl, that is the percentage of the total precipitation that falls as snow, shows that proportionally, during El Nino, there is less snow and more rain at lower elevations in the South Coast Mountains. So, in summary, here's what we know about El Nino, the PDO, and snowfall in the mountains and the interior valleys of southern BC. From the records at our long-term climate stations such as Fernie and Golden, there is less snow during El Nino. There is also a marked decadal variability in snowfall that is linked to the phase of the PDO. On the south coast, at lower elevations, say below 1200 meters, there is less snow during El Nino, and a greater percentage of the total precipitation falls as rain. At higher elevations, such as the Whistler Roundhouse, the signal is somewhat ambiguous and recent records show normal or more than normal snow during El Nino. I hope this presentation has clearly outlined for you the known effects of El Nino and the PDO on winter weather in BC. For further information, feel free to contact me at any of the following numbers. Thank you.